everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. A classic of the recorder repertoire, I know I say that about everything, but this really is the Recorder Sonatas by Handel. George Frederick Handel is one of the most important composers of the Baroque era. He was a true genius. Born in London, he later lived for 50 years in Britain and became a British citizen. And he writes really beautifully for the recorder. Before I get into Handel, this video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can follow courses in all kinds of creative subjects. There's music, but also photography, business, cooking, entrepreneurship, design. There are over 25,000 video courses, so there's definitely something for you. To take full advantage of the 25,000 different courses available on Skillshare, um, you can sign up for their premium range. That works out at less than $10 a month. However, I have something for you. In the description is a link where you can get two months of Skillshare for free. So I would join 7 million other users and go and sign up now. George Frederick Handel wrote a lot of different sonatas for instruments like the flute, violin and oboe, but there are six sonatas that are specifically for the recorder and I'm going to go into them today. Now, as well as being a composer, playing violin, harpsichord, organ, Handel was an oboe player and the fact that he played a wind instrument really shows in his sonatas. They're very idiomatic for the instrument, which means that they fit nicely and they're in nice keys as well. None of this horrible transposing into weird keys. <coughs> Bach. So when you're choosing your Handel Sonata to play, I would say they're all quite comparable in terms of difficulty. Some of them do have more movements than others. The B flat has three movements, whereas the D minor has seven. But of course, you don't have to play all of them. A few of my favorites. We have the two really fun allegros from the F major sonata. <laughs> Rending A minor. The absolute classic C major, and we're going to get into this more in detail later. And the D minor, every single movement is so memorable. The vivace. Of course, you don't have to start with an entire sonata all at once. I've picked out a few um, easier movements to get you started. So we have the Alla Siciliana from the F major. The D minor Alla Breve. di Gavotta from the C major is quite noty, it's a nice challenge for your fingers, but musically it's quite light and not so complex. So this could be a nice one to push yourself with. so many recordings available online so when you've had a listen to those you've looked a bit through the score and chosen what you wanted to play I've picked out some tips to help you with that to help you handle handle the first tricky thing is the rhythm in the slow movements slow does not mean easy and a lot of these movements have dotted rhythms uh, 16th notes 32nd notes you can look at it and think help with these slow movements in 4-4 my tip is to count in eighth notes quavers not in quarter notes crotchets and to split the bar up into eight 
beats. And you don't need your instrument for this. For example, the sonata in G minor, you have one, two, three, four and five, six, seven, eight and one. If we look a bit further at bar eight, this is a bit more complicated because we've got rests, we've got some 30 second notes. So what I've done is really drawn in those eight eighth notes to see exactly where they fall. And then we have one, two, rest, four, five and a six, rest, eight. If we hone in on that fifth beat, we see it's da da da. Those notes that look scarily fast are often way more relaxed than you think. Of course, we don't want to sound like we're playing with a metronome all the time, but it's important to understand how the music should be played rhythmically. When you've internalized that, then you can go back to counting in quarter notes, uh, pulling the rhythm around a little bit. Just keep your main beats fixed so that you have a sense of the pulse. And then within that, you can pull the rhythm around a little bit in a rubato way, subtly. The next thing to remember is the continuo. What is your accompaniment doing? You're not playing on your own, so you should be aware of this. When you're practicing, it's actually really good to read from the score. Try and have in mind what you are doing and what your accompaniment is doing at all times. For example, in the D minor Furioso, the recorder just has in the first bar. But it's important to know that the continuo is going so you have to fit exactly with them. On the other hand, in the next movement, the D minor adagio, you can see that the continuo player lays down a chord, then you play your opening, and only then do they come in with copying you. So both of you can take your time and in the next movement, the D minor alla breve, you can see that the recorder and the continuo are actually copying each other. So this can be really fun to play around with in terms of articulation, even speeding up and slowing down. So excited, if you know what is happening in both parts, you can make some really fun musical choices. Something that I notice all over the place in these sonatas are tied notes. Tied notes in Baroque music are almost always used to bring in dissonance. This is when there is a clash in the harmony and oh, it's so good. So don't gloss over these tied notes, really feel and enjoy that harmony change. Like in the A minor, if we feel every single tied note like oh, the music is gonna get a bit too much could get stodgy so sometimes this can be a nice moment to step back from being a soloist let these tied notes sing while your continuo player has a moment I want to talk about connected lines and phrasing. Now remember I said that Handel was an oboe player, he was a wind player and his music is written so well for the recorder because we have space to breathe. It's not like some of the Baroque composers I might mention. <coughs> However, all this lovely space to breathe can leave us in danger of making the music sound fragmented. <laughs> If you look carefully, Handel's music is actually in really long, beautiful phrases. It might seem like he's ending a sentence, but he's using it to pick up and go somewhere else. One of the best ways you can make sure you have beautiful long phrases that aren't fragmented is by recording and listening back to yourself. That often makes a lot of things very clear. And one of the best pieces of advice I've had in this respect was from Michele Petri, and she said, think about the connections between the notes as well as the notes themselves. And there are some beautiful slow movements that you are free to ornament, especially when phrases repeat. A classic of this is the C major. 
My best tip is to find, say, three different recordings and compare them. What do you like? What do you not like? And why? And you can even try copying the ornaments on the CD to get that musical language into your fingers. I tried this, I got a bit carried away. <laughs> so here is the opening to the handle C major sonata with ornaments by a whole bunch of famous players. Are you ready? <laughs> nothing wrong with copying these ornaments from the recording to get this musical language into your fingers and later writing your own. The last thing I want to speak about is editions. Now there are actually many different versions of the original manuscripts uh, in different copyist handwriting and the Handel Sonatas have been published by lots of different people. The Amadeus version is a very good version. It's a very trustworthy edition in that there's not been too much added and it's well researched. A good tip given by my colleague Anna Stegman is that the continuo has been realised, that means written out, in a very nice way. The tradition I have and I like is the Faber music. The realisation of the continuo accompaniment is much simpler. Um, but what I like about this is that they give really detailed information on all the differences and all of their sources um, between the different manuscripts and scores. So that's quite a nice researched edition. So that was my introduction to the Handel Sonatas. If you are playing them right now, please let me know about it in the comments. They are so, such beautiful music. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Down here is the Team Record web shop where you can order my album. Unfortunately, there's no handle on it, but lots of other nice stuff. In the description is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. Over here is my introduction to the Telemann Fantasias. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.